advancement of pregnancy diagnosis in small ruminants i shall be delivering my topic under three sub heads that is introduction or importance next is the methodology and number 3 is conclusion so let's start with the introduction the way environment is changing due to pollution and grazing land is decreasing day by day the socio economic importance of small ruminant is evident by the sharp increase in their numbers and contributions they contribute milk meat fiber skin and manure to the small holders and to landless and poor rural people as we know goats are popularly known as poor man's cow because they provide food security employment and economical advantage to the below poverty line people they can easily convert limited forages and crops into meat and milk so it's the need of our and also due to religious taboo this goat and chevon meat are very important and it's uh, like most of the people so it's the need of our to increase the population of small ruminants so productive potential of small ruminant is greatly affected by the reproductive management so when we say about the reproductive management early pregnancy diagnosis is needed for improving reproductive efficiency and to maintain the cost effective production to sheep and goat farm it's also important to predict the fetal numbers for appropriate nutritional management of pregnant females and when we maintain the uh, female during the time of pregnancy it will prevent pregnancy toxemia it will minimize the prelimbing feeding cost it will optimize birth weight increase weaning weight increase survivability of lambs decrease the embryonic mortality and also it will reduces the incidences of dystocia gestational stage determination is also useful to dry off lactating females at proper time and to monitor the females near term early detection of conception helps in repeated use of barren females which is important for embryo transfer technology so if we want for pregnancy diagnosis or proper or if uh, we want to go for early pregnancy diagnosis we should know the physiological characteristic of small ruminants that's why a comparison of reproductive characteristic of sheep and goats are presented in the table next in the next slide so these are the uh, reproductive characteristic of sheep and goat their length of estrus cycle is 17 days it's uh, almost same uh, in case of sheep and goat in case of goat 21 days type of estrus uh, that is seasonally polyestrus actually in case of uh, this tropical area they are a polyestrus but in case of a temperate uh, region they are the seasonal polyestrus uh, breeder duration of estrus in case of sheep 30 hours in case of goat 36 hour optimal breeding time for both the uh, uh, animal that is towards the end of estrus ovulation rate uh, as we know goats are most uh, prolific breeder but sheep also are multiple ovulator uh, behavioral estrus actually behavioral uh, estrus it is a uh, predominate or uh, in case of a uh, goat but sheep also uh, shown some uh, typical uh, symptom like anorexia bulbar swelling small amounts of mucus uh, they used to follow ram during the time of heat or estrus and in case of goat uh, they are uh, they are very demonstrative like they become restless wagging of tail vocalization swollen uh, bulba uh, clear uh, vaginal mucus and also they follow bark during the time of estrus next is the pregnancy progesterone as we know this uh, progesterone is the pregnancy specific hormone which maintain the pregnancy uh, uh, in case of sheep uh, during early pregnancy it is secreted by the corpus luteum but after 70 to 100 days placenta secrete by uh, placenta secrete the progesterone that's why sheep is known as placenta dependent animal and goat uh, in case of goat the corpus luteum is secrete a progesterone for the whole gestation uh, life 
Gestation length in case of a sheep 144 to 151 days, and in case of goat 147 to 155 days, almost same, just five to 10 days uh, differences are there. Cervical anatomy, actually in case of sheep, uh, their uh, cervical uh, structure is a bit uh, different from goat because they have some uh, ring like, uh, sorry, hood like structure. That's why AI in case of sheep is a bit uh, difficult in comparison to goat. In case of goat, their rings are uh, three to six number rings and they are properly aligned. Now, what are the different uh, methodology we can uh, use to uh, diagnose the pregnancy from uh, past uh, people uh, are using different type of uh, methods. The method, uh, whatever will be uh, used, that should be safe to both for offspring and dam, and uh, that should be low cost and will be uh, should be easy to apply. They are classified into three categories like visual methods, clinical methods, and laboratory methods. Now, visual methods, what are the different visual methods, visual sign we can follow uh, to uh, for uh, diagnosis of uh, pregnancy? Number one is under visual method, non-return to estrus. Because as we know, during the time of pregnancy, CL uh, secrete a progesterone, and that's why the estrogen uh, level down-regulates and uh, animal uh, will not come to heat. So in the seasonally breeding species, the animal may not return to estrus during non-breeding season. And in case of seasonally uh, breeding species, as the hypothalamus uh, get desensitized uh, due to some uh, reason. So in that case also, gonadotrophin releasing hormone uh, don't release. At that time also animal may uh, remain in an estrum condition. Uh, so at that time also people may think that animal may uh, pregnant and stress and the rare occurrence of gestational stress. Sometimes this any stress condition and uh, in some animal, it's very rare in some animal shows uh, the stress sign during the early gestation period that uh, that also can affect reliability of non-return to stress. Other visual signs observed in late pregnancy are uh, increased uh, size, size of abdomen, development of other slide vaginal discharge and movement of the fetus are visible externally. And normally movement of the fetus externally, it, uh, it's occur normally in case of advanced stages. However, accuracy of visual diagnostic symptom is always low. Next is the clinical methods. These are the different clinical methods normally we can follow. Number one is rectal palpation, abdominal uh, ballotment, uh, radiography, ultrasonography and laparoscopy. Number, uh, so under clinical methods, rectal palpation. As we know, transrectal palpation is the oldest and most widely used method for early pregnancy diagnosis, but it's, uh, for, uh, it's for large animal. This rectal palpation is the easiest and cheapest uh, and fastest method of pregnancy diagnosis with little or no harm to the animal and, uh, uh, and fetus when perform uh, it's very carefully. But rectal palpation is not popular in case of small ruminants because of uh, their small pe uh, pelvis or uh, their anatomical structure. Next is the recto abdominal palpation. Here, a glass rod, these are some older method. Here, a glass rod placed in the rectum to lift the uterus, which is palpated through abdomen. The fetus, is palpated through the abdominal wall by moving the stick side to side while applying slight upward pressure. Uh, and normally it is reliable only after 50 days of uh, gestation. Movement of the fetuses can often be palpated uh, between uh, three and a half to four months. The right flank is the most promising area for this uh, technique. As we know, the left uh, space is almost covered by the rumen. This technique is simple, cheap, and quick. But Accuracy in diagnosing multiple fetuses, often it becomes sometimes uh, invasive and more, more hazardous with respect to rectal injury and due to using of that uh, stick and there may be uh, abortion sometime. Next is the abdominal ballotment and abdominal uh, palpation. Palpation of fetuses through the abdomen is possible in sheep and goat uh, after four months of pregnancy by lifting the abdomen held between uh, both hands and location of bony uh, fetal on the basis of location of bony fetal structures. However, 
sometimes bezels uh, that means some uh, if uh, some hard structure will remain uh, in the rumen it may confuse with the pregnancy next is the radiography as uh, all of uh, as aware about this uh, technology radiography this technique is quick and can determine fetal number also and it is uh, uh, accurate uh, 90 to 100% accuracy uh, obtained after 70 to uh, 98 uh, days of gestation overall accuracy increased with the uh, increasing with the advancing of gestation period but uh, limitation uh, is that due to high cost and the hazards of exposure to growing fetus as we know these x rays are very hazardous for the growing fetus it uh, limited the use of radiography as a routine uh, procedure and uh, it is not uh, feasible uh, un uh, under field condition due to this uh, uh, limitation next is the ultrasonography actually uh, uh, normally in case of pregnancy diagnosis three modes are normally using a mode ultrasound known as amplitude depth or echo pulse uh, number two is the Doppler and number three is the Doppler and uh, B-mode ultrasonography. In next uh, slide, uh, we'll uh, describe about Doppler and uh, B-mode ultrasonography. Uh, now, the principle of ultrasonography is that the main, uh, one of the important unit uh, of ultrasonography is the transducer or probe. Now, uh, this transducer or probe have, have some piezoelectric crystal. When electrical uh, impulse pass through this piezoelectric crystal, they rearrange and they emit a, a sound wave. At that sound wave, they connect with some tissues or uh, they connect with some uh, movable structure. Uh, and uh, when they connect with tissue, that is the uh, principle of a mode ultrasonography, or sometimes they connect with uh, some movable uh, structure uh, and they reflect it back with uh, changing their fre uh, frequency and uh, they produce some image again uh, transducer uh, received that uh, reflected uh, uh, this uh, sound uh, wave and uh, uh, that produces some image or some signal in case of a mode uh, ultrasonography they produce some uh, signal in case of doppler and in case of b mode they produce uh, some images so that's the uh, principle of ultrasonography. Now, A mode ultrasound, the transducer emits ultrasound waves already I uh, described under the skin and are reflected when meet with high acoustic impedance interfaces. The transducer receives the reflected echoes and converts it into peaks on oscilloscope with horizontal scale. So accuracy in case of A mode, 97% uh, accuracy for diagnosing pregnancy from day uh, 51 to uh, lambing. A mode ultrasound is a quick, convenient, and simple technique, but it can't predict the fetal number and the viability of the fetus. Next is the Doppler ultrasound. Uh, Doppler ultrasound already uh, I told uh, about uh, their uh, principle. This Doppler shift principle, that means when that uh, sound wave change their frequency, that is known as Doppler uh, shift principle. The accuracy of intrarectal uh, Doppler transducer for diagnosing pregnancy and non-pregnancy was 82 and 91 percent respectively from days 41 to 60 of uh, gestation. Doppler ultrasonics rectal fetal viability can be detected, but detection of multiple fetuses is difficult with this uh, te technique. Next is the real time B mode, which is the latest technology. B scan ultrasonic techniques and accurate repeat safe and practical means of diagnosing pregnancy and determining fetal numbers, fetal age, uh, fetal movement, and uh, the uh, development of the placentome, etc. Real-time ultrasound produces a two-dimensional image on a screen, which can be photographed by a Polaroid camera, produces a moving image of the uterus, fetal fluids, fetus, fetal heartbeat, and placentomes. Now, normally two types of probe using in case of B-mode uh, ultrasonography. Number one is transrectal probe. Number two is transabdominal probe. In case of transrectal uh, probe, frequency use five to seven megahertz. Is, uh, it, it is required to diagnose pregnancy between days 25 uh, five to 30 in sheep and goats. 
can be used to study non-pregnant uterus and ovary also. Trans ab abdominal probe, uh, uh, generally this trans abdominal probe uh, use under field uh, condition and the frequency use 3.5 to 5 uh, megahertz. Uh, diagnose pregnancy in between day 40 to 50 in case of sheep and goats. So in case of transrectal, it has been observed that 12 hour fasting improve the accuracy of the transrectal uh, ultrasonography for detecting early pregnancy in a small ruminants. By using transrectal ultrasonography, embryonic vesicle was visible at day 12 and embryo was in between day 19 and 20 in case of you. These are the ultrasonographic image of B mode ultrasonography. Actually, uh, these images uh, are with the help of uh, one mobile ultrasound that's available with us. So, and uh, this work is, and this photograph is one of my MBS student uh, work. Uh, actually, she did pregnancy diagnosis. Uh, and artificial insemination in goat. So uh, you see the visible placentomes. Placentomes are very clear with the V mode ultrasonography and it gives the confirmatory diagnosis. These are the uh, uh, ultrasonographic image. This also from our uh, clinics, but uh, this uh, uh, ultrasonography uh, is uh, a bit uh, more uh, feature in comparison to previous one. These are also uh, showing the typical placentum uh, development, round structure, button-like structure. Next, fetal age determination. You uh, can see in this image, vesicle is very clear, embryo is very clear, embryo is very clear here. And with the help of crown ram, that means from the head up to the ram, ram that means a body of the tail. So in embryo, you can't detect the body of the tail, but still on the basis of length, from head uh, to tail, uh, the uh, length can be taken. And with, the, uh, with using some formula, uh, we can detect uh, the fetal age. Next uh, technique is the laparoscopy. Laparoscopy uh, is the directly visualizing of the genitalia. Genitalia and we can observe the embryo or uh, fetus. But the disadvantages are this technique is invasive in nature. Uh, and uh, different type of uh, units uh, are required for this technique. And so uh, it is uh, cost effective. Uh, it's high cost of uh, equipments uh, required. Uh, and uh, for uh, this, one uh, operation the uh, theater or clinic is very important. And it, needs, uh, it, it also needs a technician or a very good surgeon. And moreover, it's very time consuming. Due to availability and feasibility of other non-invasive techniques, uh, these uh, days, laparoscopy is not uh, using for uh, field uh, purpose. These uh, techniques normally we can use uh, for some uh, research purpose. Uh, number three uh, test is laboratory test. So under laboratory test, that's progesterone. I told how it uh, secrete during the time of uh, pregnancy. It's a reliable indicator of the functional corpus luteum. Uh, this uh, uh, progesterone from plasma or milk can be uh, determined with the help of ELISA or RIA-based kit, but has not become popular due to their high cost specificity. And uh, sometimes it may give uh, some false uh, positive result, like uh, uh, during the time of early embryonic death uh, or uh, in case of some uterine or ovarian pathology, at that time, the corpus luteum remain persistent. So in that, like in case of uh, mummification or in case of pyometra, uh, the corpus luteum uh, remain persistent. So in that case also, we may get the uh, level of progesterone high. So it may give some po false positive indication of pregnancy. Next is the strong sulfate. Uh, it's produced by the fetomaternal axis or by the conceptors. And uh, normally it presents in urine, milk, feces, or blood. And it's a very good indicator of pregnancy diagnosis. Their based is ELISA or uh, RIA. Estrogen from feces can be collected uh, and uh, it will be helpful for uh, pregnancy diagnosis in case of zoo, or wild or for feral species. And it can be uh, detected around uh, day 70 of gestation. And it has been observed that at that time, their uh, concentration was 0 0.1 to 0 0.7 nanogram. And it increased steadily till two days uh, before uh, parturition. And at that time, their concentration uh, was 15 to 15 nanogram per 
ml. Concentration of serum stone sulfate was significantly higher in use carrying multiple than carrying single fetus. It's a very good indicator uh, because with this uh, uh, concentration, we can uh, determine the multiple uh, fetus also. Then carrying single fetus from days 80 to 124 of gestation. In ovine, may not be a, a reliable indicator for prediction of fetal numbers due to the high variation between individuals. Ovine chorionic somatomatrophin uh, or ovine placental lactosin and, ca uh, uh, and caprine placental lactosin, it's also secreted by the uh, conceptas uh, itself. And their base is also radio uh, uh, immunoassay and achieved 97 uh, and 100% accuracy for diagnosing pregnant and non-pregnant use at day 64 of gestation respectively. Next is the pregnancy proteins. PAG, in short, we uh, can say PAG, that means pregnancy associated glycoproteins, can be detected with the help of RIA in sheep maternal blood uh, in uh, between third to fourth week after uh, breeding, both in plasma and milk uh, samples. In case of ovine, is a reliable method for early pregnancy diagnosis at firm condition. Uh, ovine PAC2 is expressed in both mononucleate and binucleate. Normally, these cells, mononucleate and binucleate cells, are present in the trophectoderm, that is the fetal membrane. Recently, nine uh, PAC uh, are identified in ovine placenta. That's ovine uh, PAC3 to ovine PAC11. Ovine uh, PAC1 and ovine PAC3 to 9 are predominantly expressed in binucleate trophectoderm cells. That means in the uh, fetal membrane. Ovine pregnancy specific protein B, that means at around 50 to 100 days, is a useful marker of placental development and function and provide a reliable indicator of fetal distress and adverse pregnancy outcome. As after parturition, PAC concentration declined uh, within four weeks. Caprine PAC family. So uh, in Caprine also, different type of PAC uh, families are there, like Caprine PAC 2. Uh, in uh, Caprine also new identified nine proteins like Caprine PAC 1, Caprine PAC 3 uh, to 7, and Caprine PAC 9 to 11. Uh, that uh, uh, are also expressed in tropoplast binucleate cells. From days 21 to 24 and throughout gestation, twin bearing goats have higher PAG uh, concentration than goats bearing one fetus. Measurement of PAG determine the onset of the disturbance of trophoblastic activity associated with the death of a fetus. So this is uh, one of the company that is uh, IDEX Repeat Visual Pregnancy Test. IDEX is the company name. And this uh, uh, pregnancy test kit uh, established by uh, USA from USA, Netherlands, Brazil, Taiwan, because already I explained that uh, this PAC uh, may be a very good uh, indicator. So they have uh, established a kit. Pregnancy uh, check uh, can be checked on the uh, day of 28 days of post uh, breeding. Accuracy uh, by using whole uh, blood 99 and by using serum 98.6%. Principle, it's based on uh, 22 parts. It's uh, specifically, they uh, have not uh, uh, expressed uh, what are the different proteins? Just uh, they have uh, shown that it's 22 parts produced by trophoblast cell in the uh, placenta. In uh, one uh, kit, 192 uh, test uh, can be held. Result uh, may get within 30 minutes. And testing animals are cattle, buffalo, goat, and sheep. This is also ELISA-based kit. Uh, you can uh, see these are the uh, wells and they have uh, shown some blue color and some colorless. That means in case of pregnant, wells appear blue. In case of uh, non-pregnant, wells uh, do not appear blue. So early uh, pregnancy factor. Early pregnancy factor was detected in the serum of all mammals tested within 24 to 48 hours of fertilization and disappeared within uh, 24 to 48 hours or uh, uh, after removal of embryo. In caprine, the early pregnancy factor uh, also uh, uh, determined with the help of rosette inhibition titer uh, test. Uh, so activity appeared within 24 hours after mating and sustained at pregnant level until day 21 after mating. However, the EPF uh, uh, determination is time consuming and unreliable till date. Now, cytokines. That means these uh, small ruminants, they secrete many types of cytokines as a whole. They are known as interferon tau. And this interferon tau, it's secreted by the pre-implantation 
uh, concept us. Uh, and so they, they, uh, that's why they are very good. Uh, uh, they are the positive indicator of uh, pregnancy. And uh, now how they and they used to give uh, uh, the maternal re uh, recognition because uh, these uh, cytokines they bind with the estrogen receptor or there are so many thoughts uh, different uh, scientists has given many uh, different types of thoughts like one group they uh, have said they reported that uh, they may bind with estrogen receptor or some other uh, uh, reported that they may bind with uh, uh, this oxytocin receptor because this estrogen and oxytocin receptor uh, are important to increase the level of uh, this uh, oxytocin and uh, estrogen which are important uh, to stimulate or to release of PGF2 alpha and that PGF2 alpha ultimately regress the P, uh, CL. As uh, they bind with uh, that uh, receptor, so ultimately PGF2 alpha will not release and the pregnancy will maintain. Another thought is that this uh, in, uh, interference, they also, interferon tau, they also uh, luteotrophic in nature because they stimulate PGE2 because, uh, and then PGE2 is the luteotrophic in nature. And uh, they produced in large amounts by the embryo after day 14 to signal the mother and uh, to establish the uh, pregnancy. It reaches a maximum by 20 to 24 days and is completely disappear by day 30 of pregnancy. The interferon tau expression is transitory. Like uh, as uh, you know that in case of human being with the help of uh, ACG kit, uh, the pregnancy uh, can be uh, uh, diagnosed uh, in uh, very early, but in case of interferon tau, it's uh, it's transitory in nature. That's why interferon tau can't be used for a pregnancy test in the blood or urine uh, of the small ruminants. Or maybe I think uh, due to species or individual uh, uh, variation, it's uh, it's may create a problem. Next is the vaginal uh, biopsy. Vaginal biopsy, that means uh, uh, the terminology itself uh, saying uh, that we have to collect uh, the vaginal cells. In case of, uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, stress condition, uh, as uh, due to increased level of estrogen, estrogen uh, having, uh, uh, the, it, it also increased the circulation. So uh, during the time of estrogen, the vaginal mucus layer gets increased. But uh, when they come under progesterone, their layer gets a decrease. So this is the uh, principle of this uh, test. The number of layers is high at stress, already I uh, explained. In sheep, the technique was 91% accurate in diagnosing uh, pregnancy after 40 days, and the accuracy increased uh, to 100% after 80 days of gestation. So limitations are it's invasive in nature. Poor results due to improper sampling because uh, this uh, tissue sampling it takes uh, much more time and imp uh, sometimes uh, due to improper tissue processing with the availability of more precise uh, technique of pregnancy diagnosis uh, the, this uh, technique is uh, limited uh, nowadays. Next uh, is the conclusions. The development of a reliable and accurate pregnancy diagnosis test for use on farm animal for the early diagnosis of pregnancy would enable prompt rebreeding of non-pregnant animals and prevent the culling of pregnant animals. Accurate pregnancy diagnosis can be achieved by progesterone and PAG assays. However, their accuracy for differentiating single and multiple fetuses is low and they are very expensive. Rectal abdominal palpation is a simple, cheap and quick method. However, its accuracy for determining multiple pregnancies is low and it may cause abortion or rectal uh, perforation. Doppler technique requires great skills to achieve high accuracy for prediction of fetal uh, numbers. Radiography and transabdominal beam mode ultrasonography accurately uh, diagnose both pregnancy and fetal numbers, but uh, radiography have some limitation. So the latest uh, technology is transabdominal B mode ultrasonography, which is cheaper than the radiography and advantageous of being safe and able to detect the fetal viability, fetal age, etc. Thank you.